Hello everybody and welcome to Marie Made This, the knitting edit. Um, I've been saying for a while I've been doing a bit more knitting and that I would uh, share with you some of those makes and I've just kind of never quite got round to it. So if you normally watch this channel for sewing and you are not at all interested in knitting, um, then I completely understand. And that's why I'm doing a separate knitting video. So um, hopefully if you're not interested, you'll pop back for some sewing a little bit later on uh, in another video. Um, if you do knit or you're just interested to see, um, then stick around and I'll just talk you through a little bit about what I've been sewing, uh, knitting, sorry, to get used to that, um, recently. Um, perhaps the first thing is just uh, to let you know a little bit about my knitting journey. Um, I am a very old school knitter, I think you would probably say. I've been knitting since I was very young, you know, maybe seven or eight something like that uh my mum taught me my mum when we were kids always had some knitting on the go we she often knit our school cardigans and jumpers for us she knit things for herself as well um and i learned from her she taught me i'm not sure where she learned from because i don't think her mum knit or at least i never saw her knit shall we say um but because of that's how I learned to knit, I am traditional in that I've only ever knit flat. Um, I knit in a throwing style. So when I see continental knitting, it kind of my mind can't get the hang of that at all. Um, so ev I think everything I've knit has been bottom up and then pieces sewn together. Um, I have never, until three days ago, four days ago, knit anything in the round on circular needles. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, and also, I am, at the minute, I'm not really precious about the type of yarn that I use. Um, in that, well, first of all, I find it, I'm one of those who's quite sensitive to certain wool products so if I put something on it prickles um and I don't like wearing it so uh, and from you know, when we were young there was when I was learning to knit it was all with acrylic wool and um so I'm not precious about it I do use acrylic um for for my projects um because it's you know it's inexpensive Technically, it's vegan. I'm not going to call it vegan wool, but, you know, if, if you're thinking about that. But and especially if you're like me, I haven't knit for a long, long time. I knit until probably I went away to university. And then I stopped. I didn't do anything really. And then I did a little bit in my 20s, um, but not for very long. And it was only recently... Uh, last year, in fact, that I thought, I just felt like I wanted to knit something again. Um, I think probably it came from picking up sewing again and then in the evenings, not wanting to sew in the evenings and wanting to find something crafty to do. So, um, so I've come back to knitting. And the first thing that um, got me back into it was actually this that I'm wearing now. So... The story behind this is that um, my mum my mom passed away 10 years ago this summer and as you do, you know, you go and sort out the house and when we felt ready and we were, I was with my dad and we were clearing out her wardrobe and at the back of the wardrobe was a huge bag with some huge balls of Aran style yarn. Um, I mean, when I say huge, I mean, it's bigger than my head. Um, 
it's acrylic yarn but it's in a an aran color it's aran weight um and there was the first maybe four inches of the back of an aran sweater that she'd started knitting and I don't know if she'd started knitting it a long long time ago or when she was trying to do it when she was ill and the mood didn't take her I don't know but she never got any further than that and my dad said oh look at all that yarn there you take it so there was I think four or five of these and these are 400 grams I think I've lost the labels now but um yeah so my dad said take it because obviously he wouldn't have used it so I took it but it was still too raw to do anything with it so I just put the bag in the back of my wardrobe and left it and then I was having a sort out a couple of years ago and found it again and I knew that I wouldn't make the pattern that she was knitting um but I went and picked up um, a pattern that I thought I would quite like to make. And then I put the pattern away because I still wasn't ready to frog what she'd done. And then last year, early last year, uh, you know, in the midst of lockdowns and all of this kind of thing, um, it started coming back to me and I thought, to be honest, I know what she would say. She would say, it's no point leaving it sitting there in the bag. Take it out of the bag and do something with it. Um, I don't mind. It's, I'd rather it was made up into something than just sitting there doing nothing. And, and I knew that's what she'd say. And she's absolute, she would have been absolutely right. So um, I decided to give it a go. And yeah, it took a while because it's, you know, Aaron patterns are quite complex, but I've done Aaron stuff before and cabling, so I knew um, skill-wise that that wasn't a problem. So this is what it is. You've seen the yarn. The pattern I picked up is this Wendy pattern, um, and I, I think it's a, a shame that they've put that round the neck because you can't see what's going on at the top. But actually, it's just a, a round neck like this. Um, and it's kind of, it fastens to here, then you can see it opens a little bit, it's quite loose, and the back of it looks like this. So you've got, so what you do is you do, you do the back, you do the two front pieces, um, these, this is, this is all, so that's one piece, that's one piece, then you do the sleeves, and then you join Oh no, actually that's knit as part of that. And then you join everything here and you just knit the yoke in a moss stitch. And then you decrease, I don't know if you can see that, but you decrease here in various places and you draw it up to the neck. So that's what I did with that. Um, it took a while and there are one or two errors in it, but I really like it. I'm quite pleased with myself. And when I say errors, it's errors in my knitting that I didn't go back to fix. I just couldn't be bothered. Nobody's going to notice. In fact, I've not worn it for a while and, and I don't know where they are now unless I go looking for them. So, um, As ever, I had to shorten it, but of course that meant making sure that I'd shortened, you know, I'd done the knitting and got the right amount of repeat pattern repeats. Um, but I'm really pleased with how it turned out, actually, considering it's the first thing I'd knit in more than 20 years probably yes and i finished it off with um the buttons are and it's quite difficult to see so i'll put some pictures in anyway um the buttons are aaron style oh in fact actually i'm looking at they are uh leather covered swirl buttons and they've come out of um, my, I think my grandma's button stash, which I inherited after my grandma died. Um, so yes, I put three buttons on there. I tend to wear this, well, I've been wearing it more as, um, an autumn jacket kind of thing. So if I've been in the car and needed something, but didn't want to have a, a coat on in the car, uh, while I'm driving. So yeah, I've been, um, I've been using it like that. 
but um, I like it. I also like the length of the sleeve. It's not really long. And I, I'm so pleased that I managed to get that just right. Get me. Um, more about that <laughs> fitting business in a moment. So I finished that and I was looking around for something else to do. And I had started watching a number of um, knitting videos or podcasts, I think they tend to be called, on YouTube. Um, and I saw so many people knitting socks. And I remembered that my dad's sister, uh, my Auntie Mary, knits socks. And she's knit them. She knit them for her husband when he was going to work. And she'd do the thick boot type socks. And they were brilliant. And then she, you know, so I always, I've always seen her knitting socks. And it's always fascinated me how you knit socks. And, you know, she'd have the, the double pointed needles. And, and it's something I'd never, ever tried. My washing machine, sorry if you can hear that. So, let me shut the door. That's better. So, I've knit myself an Aaron cardigan. How complicated can it be to knit a little pair of socks? So, um, I went into um, Abercorn, the yarn section of the Manchester store, and spoke to a young woman there. And I said, <laughs> I said to her, look, I can knit. Um, I just, I've never knit socks and I want to knit socks. What do I do? And she was absolutely brilliant. I have to say, thank you so much. I wish I knew her name, but she was great. She spent some time um, with me, you know, looking at some patterns um, just talking very generally about what the options were. And then I, I, I think basically I said to her, look, what's the easiest way to do it? I'll take your advice and she said right I would take these needles choose one of those yarns and one of those patterns and just give it a go so I did I chose um this yarn which is lovely kind of autumnal shades this was probably back in October um with some gold in them and it is the Rico um Superba Las Vegas in the colourway colourway 002 I don't know that it's got a name anyway and it is um sorry you can tell I'm not good at the knitting ones And it is 72% wool, 24% uh, polyamide and 4% polyester. So it is a sock yarn. Um, and so that was 100 grams, which was 400 metres. Yeah. And I've got about half of it left. Now, I only have little feet. I have a size 4, 37 European. Um, and I made myself socks now i don't have a sock blocker i'm not that fussed yet i made them i put them on they're fine look at them now they are um not identical twins uh, because i hadn't got my head around start where to start the stripe um, when I started the first one, I just was so so much concentrating on the construction of it. It didn't occur to me to look where the yarn colour had started. But I don't mind. I, they're just, they're so lovely. I can't tell you how delighted I was to finish just a small object like this. So um, the pattern that I used is this King Cole pattern. It has various options on. And I just did the very plain option, um, which was just uh, a two by two rib. So they're cuffed down, um, two by two rib. Um, and then it's just a plain, just plain knit the rounds. It's got um, a heel flap uh, and the gusset. And then it's just got, you just decrease to the end. And then I kitchen a stitch, not very well on this one, but kitchen a stitched um, the toe. So that was another technique I learned. So 
Yes, I am looking forward to doing some more socks now that I've got the hang of that. And because these took half of the um, 100 gram ball, I could actually make another pair the same of little socks like that. Or I might keep that for something else, I don't know. But um, socks, amazing. Very, very pleased. So I did use uh, GPNs, um, 2.5 mil for that. So that was my socks. And then it was coming up to thinking about Christmas presents. And I was, my sister-in-law suggested to me that I make um, a sweater, a sleeveless sweater for my brother. So I did, I did mention this in my um, Christmas makes video. I don't have that garment because I've obviously given it to my brother. But what I made was this, which is a King Cole pattern. And I actually made it in the same colourway, which is there. That's the thing with yarn, it gets up your nose, doesn't it? So um, I made that using the recommended yarn, which was the King Cole Homespun. Uh, it's a double knit yarn with nep, a nep in it. And this one I think is called Sea Pearl, Sea Breeze, Sea Breeze. And it's a, it's like a gray, grayish blue. It's more gray, but it's a, a blue gray rather than any other kind of gray. Um, the recommended amount of yarn for his size, I think was seven balls, but um, this man, he seems to be very, very tall. Look at the length of his body. My brother's body is not that long. So I ended up knitting it shorter and had um, this and a little bit left. So um, let's see what I can do with that. This is 22% um, fine merino superwash, 22% alpaca, 23% polyamide, 23% acrylic and 10% viscose. <laughs> that feels like it adds up to more than 100, but it can't. 20, 40, 60, 80, 90. Oh no, it does. It just seemed to be quite a lot of it there anyway. Um, these are 50 gram balls and there is 175 meters in those. It's really soft. I actually think I could probably wear that without any discomfort. Um, so, We'll see. But yeah, that's a that's what I made that in. Um so there should be I will put some pictures in so you can uh see that garment. And I was very pleased with it. It's a very plain stocking stitch, um front panel uh, middle panels in the front and back. And then the side has got it's difficult to see, but it's it's like a rib knit and then um it's a four pattern repeat and then so every fourth row and you actually knit all the way across and then purl all the way across. Um, and then you do the rib other time, so you just get that textured effect. So I enjoyed knitting that. And because there weren't any sleeves, um, it knit up a lot quicker than I um, was anticipating. So I was kind of in the mood then. So I then went and decided I wanted to make myself just a big quick knitting chunky sweater um but again there's a story behind this isn't there what i'd wanted to make because i'd had i saw the pattern actually when i was looking for something for this um and it was a free pattern that i had downloaded and it was this rowan pattern called wintry by Marie Wallin and I really loved this kind of big cable effect and I liked the look of that neck there um, and the fact that the sleeves were not mega long but I knew that I would have had to shorten longer sleeves anyway so I figured they would sit right. What you can't tell is that there's actually like a bit of a peplum thing on the bottom and it was only when I went on to Ravelry to see some of the people's makes, I realised that it looks very different. But I figured that I didn't have to do the peplum, I could just 
stop at the bottom band. So I picked up um, this chunky marble from James C. Brett. This is again 100% acrylic um, because I just wanted something big and chunky to be able to put on while I'm wandering around the house this time of year. Um, and I loved this colourway. This is the lights playing havoc again. But it's beautiful blues, greens, turquoise, then a little bit of darker, darker petrol blue. Um, yeah, really my colours. And this is a, it's 312 metres. Uh, and it is a 200 gram ball. So I've got enough of that to make this before I realised that the there was a peplum there so I didn't need as much and I started knitting it up and it was so frustrating as you can see I can cable I kept making mistakes in this and I made so many that I don't know if there is a problem with the pattern it might just have been me but I started to not enjoy it anymore. And I was talking about this in my Vlogmas videos, if you've watched those. And I hummed and hawed and I thought, well, I've lost the time anyway. I'm not ploughing on with it. It's annoying me. So I frogged it. Um, I didn't frog it until I'd started <laughs> its replacement. But once I'd got on with that, I felt okay about it. And I went for, as its replacement, um, this pattern, which is called Funnel Neck Pullover. But what really um, attracted me to it was this lattice work on the bottom and on the bottom of the cuffs. And the fact that it's got quite a nice neck, but it wasn't a really tight polo neck. Um, so I liked the look of that and in this colour I thought it would work quite nicely. Now, it's knit, um, actually you knit in stocking stitch the front back sleeves and then you knit the uh, lattice work hem and cuffs um, this way. So you just cast on 60, 15, 16 stitches and you just knit that around um and yeah so it's it's a you know slightly different construction um what i really liked was when you've made this you join it together using a kitchen a stitch and i just learned how to do that so all works out in the end um for some reason i decided oh, i knew i wanted um a bigger kind of oversized one um, so I made the biggest size. I couldn't work out whether the size was the body size or the finished size um, from this pattern, but it didn't matter. I ended up with this. Now I will put some pictures of me wearing it because it's easier to see, but th those are the colours have come up quite nicely. Um, yeah, the stripes, the stripes, the stripe matching is not brilliant on the front and back um, because I wasn't really bothered, but I have managed to more or less match the sleeves, which I was quite pleased about. Um, the only, there were two, two issues with it. One stemmed from the other. The first one is that obviously it was gauge. So I ended up having to go down half a size it said to knit on eight millimeter needles uh, i was knitting on seven and a half to get stitch gauge but i couldn't get row gauge properly the row gauge was i was always just a little bit more higher in my rows so at 10 rows was was giving me more fabric than the pattern suggested because the row because my row gauge was not quite right and it is a chunky ball uh, so because it's a raglan the underarm join 
of the raglan and the body pieces is actually not tight as this is which you know not tight but as this fits my underarm this one is lower because i really needed to do to decrease quicker on the sleeves and the body um because that's made that too long that that hangs too low now that's really only a problem if i wanted to put a coat on on top of it and because i made this for around the house i don't mind at all it's just lovely um chunky easy to wear um so i'm not bothered about that but you know i will bear it in mind for future things like that that because i'm now thinking now i can think in sewing about alterations i need to make i don't have those skills yet in knitting uh to do that or i'm picking them up but it's just taking a bit longer so i think i just need to be a little bit more um aware of that in future for other items um once you've joined all the pieces together, you actually knit the collar neck band in the round. And that was my first ever foray into using circular needles. I know it's, it's silly, isn't it? But I never did. I've never, ever had to do it. I didn't own, I had to go out and buy circular needles because I didn't have any. My mum hadn't had any, so there weren't any in her needle collection. So, that, I mean, I love the colours of this. It's great. It's not, I don't feel it prickly. Um, and it's a great length. The only other thing I had to do, talking of length, was, so this is the bottom band that you knit like this. For the sleeves, because of where the raglan was sitting um, under the arm, I knew if I did the sleeve cuff the same as that, which it should be, that the sleeve would be too long. So I actually ad adapted that pattern. So on here, it's got two diamond crosses across the width of the hem. And I managed to adapt the pattern. So I just got one diamond on each of the sleeve cuffs. So, I was really quite pleased with how that worked out because it now sits the sleeve ends just in the place I would want it to um, and the hem ends in the place I would want it to. It matches up even though it's not perfect um, and so that's, I'm really really pleased with that. That's my funnel neck lattice jumper. So they're my finished objects. Um, and I have, uh, well, it's a work almost in progress. Um, by the time this video goes up, it will be in progress. It's in swatch at the moment. Um, I saw um, on Instagram um, a teaser and some test knits for an amazing, it, it's a sweater where, you know, when I swiped onto it and I actually, took an inward breath and saw it and I just thought oh, I had to make it and it didn't occur to me to ask myself if I had the skills to make it I just knew I had to make it and it is from um, Jennifer Steingas and it's the Avena sweater and the picture I saw was actually of someone who'd cast this on and then they put it down so it was just a circle and it was this Avena, which I think is oats or I think it's the word for oats. And it was just spiraling out from the neck and it was so, so beautiful. And I just thought, right, I want to have a go and I want to make it as near as possible to that. So I got this pattern when it was on sale, um, when it was just launched and it's to be made in, it's a double knit. Um, so far, I'm looking at the pattern and I like all the information. Um, I like that you've got a bust circumference and a finish circumference. Um, I like that you've got um, information as to how the, how big the different portions are. 
Um, and so in particular, what I'm going to be looking at is trying to get a measurement right on the yoke so that this sits nicely. So I've gone for an acrylic yarn again. Um, and if I like it, um, then I can always think about, you know, maybe copying more exactly. The sun is not helping there, is it? I'm sorry. So I've been swatching and I've got my needle gauge right, I think, now my circular needle so what i've gone for is the highland heathers double knit it's in shade 7230 bros it's called um it's a yeah a double knit 100 grams about which is approximately 272 meters um and it's it is a very kind of pale beige colour. I think this is a bit lighter, but yeah. And so for the contrast colours, I've gone for these two. So they will fade down. So the this one is number uh, 7227 and it's called Hawthorn. And it's a really lovely kind of russet red colour, I think. Very autumnal. Um, yeah. And then the other one is called marmalade which i really love and that has more brownie tones in it so this should fade from one into the other and they are my choices for that and um i've been looking at jennifer steingas's patterns and they're just absolutely gorgeous so um i'm kind of thinking that if this worked out i might like to try some more but it's early days yet um there's going to be a lot of firsts in that pattern for me. It will be the first time knitting in the round. First time knitting top down. I've never, never done that before. So I'm going to be taking my time with it. Um, and I think the tricky bit once I've done colour work before, nothing too complicated, but this doesn't look too complicated either. Um, but just making sure that I get my tension right with the colour work, um, learning how to split for arms, all of that kind of thing. I'm looking forward to it um, and um, that's going to keep me occupied, I think. And by the time you see this, I will have cast on. I intend to cast on this evening. So that's that. And I think the custom is to finish up with acquisitions. Um, I love that word, acquisitions. Um, in sewing, I talk about a fabric haul. Um, I don't talk about acquisitions in fabric. Maybe I should. Um, so I do have just one um, because I am a, a monogamous knitter. So I haven't got an awful lot going on and I'm not yet comfortable with thinking, oh, I like that yarn. I'm going to get so much of it, a skein five balls whatever, because I need to know exactly what I'm knitting to know how much to buy so um this is what I've done so my acquisition um is to be able to knit some more socks and this is from Wool Warehouse um and I I found a free pattern on Ravelry oh I, yes um, if you are on Ravelry, um, I'm on there as Marie made this too. So you should, hopefully you'll be able to find me there if, if you're interested. Um, and I want to make these socks. I'll put a picture in because I haven't got the pattern here. It's not a printed pattern. Um, but they are socks with the Star Trek logo on them. So uh, I was thinking of making these maybe for me or I might make them for a present. I haven't decided yet. Um, but I've gone for these. This one is a Drops Farble um, Superwash 
treated sock wool. Uh, I was looking at the Nord, uh, Drops Nord, but they didn't have the black. And I don't know why I just didn't wait, because I'm not going to start these straight away, I don't think. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that's that. And this is in the colourway 400, which is black. And then this one, I think it's called Mustard. I don't know if they have names. I think on the website it said Mustard. This is colour 111. And it is a very mustardy yellow for my um, Star Trek insignia. I think I'm just going to do the pattern that's on the side, the insignia that's just on the side of the ankle and not do the little yellow stars all the way across for the first time, just because I'm worried about um, tension. Um, still, still, you know, getting my feel around knitting socks. So I think one step at a time. Um, I might make these for someone else. It doesn't feel quite as soft as I was hoping. Um, so yeah, I might make these and give them to my brother who's a bit of a Star Trek fan. Um, but I thought that'd be a bit of fun and it was inexpensive yarn and, oh, I should say this is 75% um, wool and 25% polymead. And they are 50 gram balls, which is about 205 metres. So I've got two of these and one of these. So that should be plenty to make a pair of socks with Star Trek on them. <laughs> a bit of fun, isn't it? I think I will do um, a knitting video every now and again once I've got some things to show you. Um, it's not going to take over from from sewing um but it's a nice accompaniment and certainly in the winter months i think uh, i'll enjoy having some needles in front of me while i'm watching things on television so thank you for watching i hope it's been interesting i hope uh you know if you're a knitter too let me know because i know some of my um people that i follow um sewing wise are knitters as well um so yeah it'd be nice to see if there's any more of you out there and um to see what it is that that everyone's been up to or hear about any tips or anything like that so yeah thank you very much for taking the time to to listen to watch and hopefully i'll see you again soon take care